Surprise! Someone's here already. Ooh. She likes lifting her head up a lot, so I need to be like holding her. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And as you guys can see, someone is with us today. So I was supposed to do, I was planning on doing the third trimester update once I was on maternity leave and that was going to happen but I was supposed to work all the way up to mid-October which is like the second week of October and then after that I was gonna have um, my maternity leave and she wasn't supposed to be born until like the end of October almost entering November so in my third trimester um as I mentioned in my other video of my first and second trimester I didn't really have any like crazy symptoms or anything like that um not much had changed and so for my third trimester obviously I was a lot bigger I was getting a lot more tired and I was getting um more I don't know pain in my stomach are you still throwing up or are you making noises I can't tell let's see what were my symptoms I didn't really have any more big changes except for the fact that I was getting bigger I didn't get too big um I wish I could have shown you guys but I will show you guys picture of my baby shower because I don't think I included those on the vlog in case you guys don't know I do have a vlog channel and I'll link that down below you guys can always go watch those videos this year I didn't vlog as much um but I did up upload that video of the baby shower and I'm also going to upload um, uh, bits and pieces of the actual delivery or maybe I'm just gonna put that in this video I think I'm just gonna do that in this video so you guys can like see what was going on as I talk so yeah during my third trimester I was still working I was still walking a lot going up and down the stairs which I thought it was all like I think it's all good that I kept moving and stuff um, but I was planning to go on maternity leave on mid-October and then I was gonna have those two weeks three weeks to like relax and settle in get everything set up and film for you guys ahead of time and film enough videos till like November or whatever so throughout these past months I was supposed to have videos to upload but that didn't go as planned so what happened was I got tested for the sugar level thing diabetes i don't know what what that sugar test is they make you drink a bottle like this big of like a sugary drink and then they take your blood test and one of them actually came out high they made me take the three hour one the one that I have to keep coming back every hour and then they would take out blood just to see how it was and the first one was the one that came out um a bit high i guess and so my doctor was a bit worried. She wanted me to like keep an eye on it just because technically it didn't qualify me as like having diabetes or whatever. But the fact that one of them was high kind of made her concerned. Um, I wasn't eating that many sugary stuff. So I don't know why my sugar level came out high on the first one. I mean the first time they took the test I had that week was like crazy because I did eat a lot of sugar. So I'm assuming that's why, but everything else, I'm like, I drink water most of the time. I don't drink soda or like juices or anything like that. So I wasn't really concerned about it. Um, but she had me sent, sent to um, a specialist where they were gonna monitor the baby and see if everything was fine. So I went to that to USC and um, the first appointment was on a Monday and I went in there it was like an hour or so I sat there and they just monitored the heart and like other stuff I'm not sure what and everything turned out fine they're like okay just come back on Thursday and um, I chose the morning just because I wanted to go back to work afterwards that was my plan and so Thursday came around and I went in for my appointment in the morning my husband actually dropped me off and then he went to work i was just gonna take an uber afterwards to get to my job but apparently that was never gonna happen because once i went in there for my with the specialist this time around 
they saw the heart rate drop and it wasn't too alarming it wasn't like like drastically but it was dropping every time I was having a contraction so apparently I was having contractions as well but I didn't feel anything so I was like I'm having contractions and so yeah they called my doctor my doctor um had told them to send me to the hospital where well, the hospital was like right next door um i had my baby in the california hospital the dignity hospital or whatever it's in downtown um so that's where i was and so the specialty the specialist was in the building next to it so my doctor had me sent to the hospital and i'm like wait what i'm going to the hospital and so i was kind of alarmed in a way or thrown off by it because i wasn't expecting that they're like, oh, okay, well, your doctor wants you to go to the hospital. And I was just like, they're going to continue monitor monitoring you over there. So I was like, okay, I guess. But I felt fine. I didn't feel like anything was wrong. I didn't feel any pain. I was like normal, like I was pregnant, but that's it. So I ended up going next door to the hospital. They sit me down and they take me in and sit me down and then they continue monitoring the same thing, the same belt thing that they put on, the heartbeat and everything. And I was there for a while and then the nurse comes in and she's like, it looks like um, the heart rate keeps dropping every time there's a contraction. So it looks like you are you might be staying. And I was like, I'm going to stay? I was like, what the heck? Yeah, they're, she was like, yeah, we're going to induce you and... It looks like you'll be staying. And I was like freaking out in a way, but not like I wasn't worried. It's just that I was thrown off because I was not ready. I didn't have anything ready. Um, everything that I was planning to do and set up was gonna be like the following week. This was on Thursday. That Monday coming along, that following week, that was already gonna be I was already gonna be on my like time off. So Friday was going to be my last day and it was Thursday so I was like really like I, I almost made it but um the heart rate dropping wasn't drastic so it wasn't too alarming that's why I, I didn't I feel like I didn't panic for the baby I felt like my baby was fine and you know sometimes you feel like when something's wrong I didn't feel like something was wrong I I felt like she was okay I didn't freak out about that part I was freaking out because they were telling me they were going to induce me. That meant that the contractions were probably going to be a lot more harder. Because from what I read is that when they induce you, the contractions are a lot stronger. And they pile on on you like more than the regular contractions on their own. So knowing that I was going to be induced, I know that most of the people that get induced, they get the the epidural and I did not want to get the epidural. I was planning on just like, I was mentally had been preparing myself to go through the pain and breathe through it and just really just let the pain in, but like let it go at the same time. So I was prepared to do all that, but knowing that I was gonna get induced made me worry a lot because it made me think that I was gonna end up getting the epidural, but I was still gonna try to be strong and tough it out so hours later they they finally tell me yeah for sure that I'm gonna be staying that night I'm not going home and so I ended up texting my husband and telling him that I'm in the hospital everything's okay but then I'm not going home I ended up telling my boss that I wasn't gonna show up to work I was gonna end up staying in the hospital that day so my sister, I, I was texting my sister throughout this time and she actually comes over and and she she brings me a teddy bear and we take pictures and she she's just there keeping me comp company until my husband gets um gets to the hospital because he was working so I told him don't get out early I'm I'm fine I'm just sitting here like or I was actually laying down but um yeah, I told him to just finish work and then once he was done, he'd go home and get the stuff and then come over. So that's what happened. It was a pretty boring day. I was just laying there um, watching TV. Um, there was people next to me. It was a room where there was two other like spots. No, there was one more person next to me. And so people kept coming in there and I was just sitting all the way at the end of the room. So that was good because no one really entered or interrupted me. 
Um, and then they brought me dinner, so at least I ate, but it wasn't good food. It's hospital food, and it wasn't even, like, something I really liked. So, I was like, man, this sucks. I didn't really eat that day. Um, I had gone in at 8 in the morning to the specialist, and then from there, I, it, I stayed all day next door, and it was just a really long day. Um, and I knew it was going to get a lot longer. So that was basically what happened on Thursday. They they told me the heart rate was dropping every time I had a contraction. Um, and then they were going to keep me in the hospital and then they were going to induce me. So hours went by. The next day, they were supposed to transfer me to my other room. They were going to trans transfer me to the labor room. And um, once they did that, later this took a long time i'm going by through it fast now that i'm saying it but this took forever so they had to break my water but that didn't happen till the end of friday towards like the afternoon they broke my water um of course during this time um his mom came my family came and then they visited us and then on friday night and my husband was just there with me I wasn't feeling any pain. They were they put the pitocin on me. They they raised it up. They started from like the bottom and they kept raising it up all the way up to 20. On Friday, I was around 17 when the doctor came to break my water. So once that thing got to 20, I was feeling the contractions like crazy. And then the thing with me though, I don't know if every woman I guess has the pain differently my pain was more towards the back left side yeah the back left lower like back that's where I was feeling the pain like I, was, I feel like I was so frustrated I couldn't move I couldn't get up I couldn't walk because they had me with the IV and the cables and monitoring the baby's heart I just had a bunch of cables, so every time I had to get up to go to the bathroom, I had to, like, disconnect everything, put it, wrap it around me, and then walk with my IV. It's just horrible. I, everything I had planned didn't work out that way. I was planning on staying home, feeling the contractions, and just to kind of carry it out. And then until the last moment, um, when I felt like the contractions were more constant, then I was going to go to the hospital because that's exactly what I didn't want. I didn't want to be with the cables and looking like if I'm dying and I'm like, I'm just having a baby. But, um, that's what happened. The pain was kicking in on Friday night and I held on, but I, I couldn't do it. The pain was too much and i asked for the medication the pain medication that they give you through the iv that way i didn't have to get the epidural and so the nurses was were so nice um one of them told me about that one they're like if you don't want the epidural you can get the pain medication through the iv and i was like yes i want that and so i'm getting a text message um so yeah um i got that but my baby wasn't reacting well to it her heart was dropping again and so they had to take me off that pain medication and my only other option was the epidural and at this point the contractions were like uh, I wanted to like make it through but knowing that the baby wasn't coming anytime soon it was gonna be more hours of that pain and it was just gonna get harder so I was like, just give me the epidural. And even then, when I told them, it takes half an hour for them to give you the epidural. So I still had to suffer through that half an hour. But I was like, whatever, just give me the epidural. So I had to get the epidural. I was scared because I was like, I know people tell were saying that th their backs hurt and all that. I just, I wanted to stick it out. I didn't want more stuff being like forcing my baby to come out of me I guess so I got the epidural it was kind of scary because they're like don't move at all even if you feel a contraction don't move and that was just like okay I'm like I think I can do that but I didn't move everything was fine the needle I didn't feel it like maybe I'm just I, I know a lot of people are afraid of the needles I didn't feel it it was like a pinch so it wasn't that bad 
and it helped so much like it numbed everything and it felt so good to f get a break because those contractions were not really giving me a break like I, when I did go away it didn't fully go away like I still felt felt that ache in my back and so that felt nice I relaxed I got to sleep a little bit I dozed off um at some point I felt like when they gave me the pain medication was when I felt like I was losing it like like not like going crazy but like I became very mellow and I was like I was conscious of what was going around me like when my family came in and everything and I was responding back but I just couldn't open my eyes I remember just laying there and I can hear everyone and I'm talking to them and everything and I can kind of open my eyes but I really didn't want to like I was really in the moment and I'll insert clips so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about um but yeah I remember I'm, they probably thought I was like out of it or something but I was conscious I knew what was going on it's just that the medication made me feel very like mellow <laughs> I don't know so after that I had to wait a while because I was at this point I think I was like seven in seven centimeters uh, a few hours later it was already Saturday morning was it Saturday morning yes it was Saturday morning like around 6 a.m. and they're like you're nine and a half inches or something like that so they're like you're almost there but we also need the baby to drop more so even after i was ready basically um they wanted her to drop more because i guess she hadn't dropped enough they're like that way you don't have to push as much so i was like oh my goodness the pain is kicking back in so i started feeling the pain again this time it was more towards my stomach like my stomach would get hard obviously um I didn't feel it as much in my stomach it was still my lower left back um but I was starting to feel the pain again and I just wanted to push and get this baby out of me I was done I was like I want her out I'm done with this pain because this was all p hours of pain so it just once you're in pain I feel like every minute takes like forever and I kept looking at the clock it was on my right side and I kept looking at that clock and being like oh my goodness when is she gonna be born so it was like around six something I think when I was like looking at that clock and my baby was finally born at 8 56 so it was almost 9 in the morning she was finally born um, once the nurse came they checked me they're like okay you're ready um, the pushing the actual delivery was super fast um, it was the easiest part for me it wasn't painful or anything because everything was numb down there but um, it was kind of hard to push in a way because they were like push 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 and I'm like I can't push anymore because they have you push after I mean during every contraction was there yeah during once a contraction was coming they're like okay get ready to push and they wanted you to push through throughout that whole contraction and sometimes I would be able to do it and then others they were just too long and I'm like that's it I can't push any longer so then I'll be like okay I'm done and so um but I pushed pretty fast I didn't take that long at least I don't think I did it was probably like half an hour and then like for five or ten minutes we were waiting for the doctor to arrive for the last pushing they made me push the first few contractions and then once she was almost out they're like okay we're gonna take a break and um wait till the doctor gets here and i was just like okay and so the doctor we were waiting for the doctor until the contractions were happening but I, they were like letting those pass by and then once the doctor got there they're like okay continue pushing and i was just like okay so I pushed and she, I didn't feel her really like coming out. They're like, oh my goodness. My husband's like, I can see her head, her hair. And I'm like, I don't really feel down there opening and like her head coming out. You get me? Like, I, I don't know. Everything was really numb. So I didn't feel it. So I just felt like I was pushing, but nothing was happening. But they were telling me she was coming out. She's almost out. And I'm like, okay, I guess. So I just continued doing what I was doing and yeah she finally came out it was almost nine in the morning and i was so glad it was over i was like oh someone's up or sleeping okay so i was glad 
that was over and so my husband was really excited he he saw everything I didn't at that point I didn't care I was so worried about people like being there and looking at my whole body and it was a mess and then that medication obviously also made made you um had side effects and it gave me diarrhea and that was really bad because they gave me some pills afterwards I don't know I just know I was a mess I had cables all over me I was bleeding I was just like my legs were still numb but I was still able to get up but they were like weak it was kind of weird walking with your legs still kind of numb and so but everything went well I only got like two stitches it didn't hurt that bad so um yeah everything pretty much went not as planned but my baby was fine she was healthy she weighed 7.11 um why well, I say 7.11 so it's 7 pounds and 11 ounces so the only reason I remember that because when they told me I'm like oh 7-eleven like the store so yeah like the store so that was basically what happened I stayed there four days that was on Saturday morning when she was born I still stayed the night and then Sunday um that's when we got to go home but in the afternoon like at three or oh, it was almost four when we got home so it took a while for us to get released they had all the paper signing and stuff like that they had to take the IV needle thing out of me they they did her little blood test and ear test like hearing test she did fine she was a little yellow like with jaundice thing but that took off already so she's she's good now um so yeah my husband got to sleep in a small little sofa uncomfortable and he was cold because there was AC like right on top of him and so I was like that's nothing compared to what I had to go through but that was basically what happened those were the longest days ever I wanted to leave already um but yeah I'm really happy that it's over and that I have my baby with me now and it was a very crazy experience to go through so at this point I don't know if I want more kids but um we'll see in the future so anyways I hope you guys like this video I will be making um other videos even though they're late I'm still gonna do the what's in my hospital bag so I can show you guys what I ended up taking because obviously I did not have that ready either and a few other videos that are coming along so I'll try to get those done for you but of course I have a baby and I have no idea how, how other YouTubers do it with kids because it is hard maybe once I get her in a routine because right now she's not on a routine except her own which is kind of stable but not so much so I'll see you video and yeah wish me good luck <laughs> bye Breakfast. <laughs> I'm eating cereal. Okay, you're sleeping in there. Mm hmm. Por dos. So they just went to leave most of the stuff, and we're about to change her. I'm gonna change too. But she's still kind of sleepy. My baby. Oh, they need to take this thing off. But yeah. She's going to be all cute and pink. 
her little socks, her little gloves, and then two piece kind of sort of. This is a one piece, but her legs will be exposed, so we're gonna put these big pants on her. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're gonna take some pictures and then we'll head home. It's pretty hot outside, it's 93 degrees outside. Adeli, you go. Baby. Mm, estoy enojada. <laughs>